How do you make money from Airbnbs? What's the hardest part about real estate investing? What makes a property a good deal? How do you find investors? How do you network? How do you meet people? For the introverts that are watching this video, do you have any advice for them? Um, what do you think I am? Introvert extrovert? I would guess extrovert, but I don't You'd know. You're 100% wrong. All right, so if you guys wanna invest in real estate, then you're gonna find this video super helpful because we're gonna be talking with a bunch of real estate millionaires, asking them what their secrets are. We're at WealthCon here in LA. There's so many incredibly successful investors attending this conference. So we are gonna be hitting them with the questions you want answers to. Free mentorship begins now, let's go. So what's your name, age, and what do you do? My name is Gerardo, 34, Airbnb. How many properties do you have? I have 50 Airbnbs. How did you get to that point? I use a unique system where I do arbitrage and burr. So I own half of the Airbnbs and the other half I do uh, arbitrage. But it's pretty unique where I'm partnering with the developers that are building these. We partner on the deal where we both put in money to furnish and then we both uh, split profit. Can I ask how much revenue did you guys do last year? About four million. And where are most of your properties located? All of them are in LA, yeah. LA is really expensive. How do you do that? Partnerships, okay. you know, I use the strategies of the burst strategy, which is you buy, you rehab, you rent, and you refinance, except the rent portion of it, I do Airbnb to increase the cash flow. So with those increased cash flows, I buy more properties. And then when the increased cash flows from those properties, I take those and I um, invest them into arbitrage deals. Is there a specific type of property that you recommend for beginners? For beginners, I recommend the arbitrage method if you're looking for quick cash flow. If you already have some enough money to invest into real estate, then I recommend doing a single family homes that have the homes all the way to the front of the property to the setback where you can put an ADU in the rear. And by doing that, you'll be able to have two incomes for that property. What books do you recommend? Number one, Rich Dad Poor Dad. I recommend the book, The Secret. I recommend the book, Outwitting the Devil. What's the hardest part about real estate investing? Finding the deal. You find the deal, that's where you make your money. And if you can find a good deal, you'll attract the money. What's your craziest Airbnb tenant story? I rented out my home. It was my personal home and it was one of my first Airbnbs. Somebody rented it from me and then threw a massive like 65 person party. I went, the neighbors called me. They told me, hey, somebody's having a party. I didn't believe them. So I showed up to the property. I opened my door and somebody said, hey, sir, it's going to be $5 to get in. It's like, $5 to get in? Are you crazy? This is my house, bro. Let me get in my house. And I walked into the house. There was a DJ by my fireplace. All of the furniture was thrown in the backyard. It was insane. But then I noticed that they were all like 16-year-olds. So what I ended up doing was just get, I stood up on a chair and I was like, hey, guys, I'm going to call the cops if you guys don't get out. So everyone leaves my house. So it took like an hour for like the soccer moms to pull up and like start picking up all their kids. So what's your name, age, and what do you do? My name is Forbes Riley, and I am a celebrity television host who to teaches people how to pitch. Started things like the X Games for ESPN, and I'm an actress and a real estate owner and investor into a lot of things. I own a television studio, I own shopping malls, I own a lot of stuff. Do you have advice for young people that want to chase their passions, but they don't know how to do it? If you're young, stop saying you're young. Seriously, okay, gotcha. it's not a barrier. There's no, oh, I get to be 35 and now I can make it. No, young is the currency right now. And here's my next thing. If you are young, enjoy being young. For the introverts that are watching this video, that want to get into show business or want to do something similar to you, do you have any advice for them? Um, what do you think I am? Introvert, extrovert? I would guess extrovert, but I don't You'd know. You're 100% wrong. I am, and that's another thing. You label yourself, you are your label. Get comfortable and stop calling yourself a freaking introvert. And then for the people that are watching that want to get into real estate, what advice would you have for them? Well, two things. Either make money or get your pitch down. Figure out which one you want to do. Do you want to be a flipper? Do you want to be an Airbnb? Pick one, do it for a while, get good at it, and start to make some money. Your next five, 10 years, what's your goal and how, what are you going to do? How are you going to get there? Kiss that man as often as I can because I love my hubby. I spent my whole life looking for him to watch my beautiful daughter and son step into their greatness and to be a role model for all women. Come here. We're talking about being an entrepreneur. He's young, he's asked me a lot of fun questions. Okay. And I'm gonna have you step in for a second. I'm gonna- Why don't you come stay with me? Well, <laughs> well he, one of the things he said is, what do you do if you're an introvert? I said, how do you know you're an introvert? And I said, what do you think I am? You fake it, fake right. it till you make, make it. it. My name's McKenna Riley. I run an online education company. We teach people how to do pitching and selling and productivity. My five to 10 year goal is to not only make my mother's dreams come true, that's like my five year goal is to build the business, create dreams, and then my 10-year goal is to travel to every country in the world. How do you guys create this amazing mother-daughter dynamic? She finally listened to me. <laughs> she took me serious. By the way, I do want to say something. Not a perfect relationship. When she was 12, she used to travel with me all the time. When she was 12, she hated me, yeah? I didn't hate you, but 
It was definitely, I will say, if any parents or kids listening out there, if you're a kid, show this to your parent. If you're a parent, open your ears. I couldn't stand my mother because she wouldn't listen to me. I told her to invest in Bitcoin. I told her about crypto. I told her about funnels and books and marketing and all these things that I was seeing. And she wouldn't listen to me until one day, she finally, during COVID, said, you know what, let's do this. I have nothing else going on. I believe in you, I believe in us, and we built it. And that's, I think, what it really just took was believing that age is not real. I mean, it is real, saying that is relative, but the number of it does not have anything to do with your expertise or how valuable your knowledge is. Thank you so much, you guys. Okay, I hope you guys are getting a lot of value and learning from all the advice. And since we're on the topic of investing, you guys have heard me talk about how Fundrise has opened up private real estate to investors of all sizes. I'm an investor myself, which is why I was excited to hear that after spending the last decade democratizing real estate, Fundrise has turned its eye toward venture capital with a focus on companies powering the AI revolution. Seriously, everyone's looking for the next big thing to invest in. And although everyone knows about AI, no one really knows how to invest in it. Right now, there are huge AI companies like OpenAI that are growing super fast, but they're privately owned. And so the only way to invest would be through employee shares or venture capital firms. And that's where Fundrise comes in. I've used Fundrise in the past to get into private real estate myself. And now that people like you and I can build a venture portfolio of companies in the AI industry, I'll definitely be looking into that as another way to invest my money. In just one year, Fundrise's venture fund has raised over $100 million and invested in some of the most groundbreaking private tech companies in the world. It's also super easy to sign up and only takes a few minutes. So yeah, I highly encourage you guys to check out Fundrise using the link down below. I am super bullish on AI and Fundrise is doing it right. And now let's get back to the next guests who are well known in the real estate space with a lot of great advice to share. What's your name, age, and what do you do? My name is JJ Azizian. Well, I'm a real estate investor. Okay. I've, I've been an owner of commercial real estate for 30 years. Uh, I've got three shopping centers, about 20, 25 doors, three houses, property in Cleveland, the condominium at the beach here in Southern California. How is the real estate scene different now than it was before? I think there's just more people getting into it. And when you have a higher demand, that's going to drive up the price. What are a lot of real estate investors not doing today that they should be doing? They're not marketing themselves. Well, I think the best way to market yourself is about building relationships, leveraging social media, leveraging Facebook, Instagram. So what are some ways that people can use Facebook to grow their investing business? They can join my networking group, which is absolutely free. Okay. JJZZian.com. Go there, click register now. But I teach people for free every twice a week with Zoom calls how to use and leverage Facebook to build a visibility. Do you think mentorship is crucial to succeed today? Yes. The success of anybody in any industry is going to be predicated upon the people you surround yourself with. If you surround yourself with people that are successful and of the same mindset and focus for success, you will be successful. What's better, residential or commercial real estate? Everybody has a preference. Some people are all about commercial. Some people are all about single family. Which one have you had a better experience with? My portfolio is predominantly commercial. So are commercial tenants easier than residential tenants? Oh yeah. You're not going to have a commercial tenant calling you at midnight because the toilet stopped up. Any final advice you want to leave for beginner investors? Get into an education program. Join my networking group where I teach people how to use and leverage social media to build their presence so that others are aware of who they are so they can get assistance from the community. You don't market your business, you market yourself. If you're not visible, they won't know who you are. So what's your name, age, and what do you do? Jorge Contreras, 35 years young, and I'm a real estate investor who focuses on short-term rentals and I also own a coaching company. How many properties do you have? Currently, we have 18 properties that we own, sublease, and manage, and I have 10 units that are ground up developments right now. Can you walk us through your first property, like how you got that and where you got the funding for it? So my very first property I purchased on, closed on May 23rd, 2012. It was a single family home in Boyle Heights, Los Angeles, California. Bought it using an FHA loan. So I only need, needed three and a half percent down. Purchase price was 240. So my down payment was only 8,200. Wow and it didn't need that much. The seller paid for all the closing costs because it was a bad time to buy. So that's how I got that one. I lived in the master, rented all the other rooms and lived for free. Do you have advice for people that want to build up a sizable real estate portfolio? Yeah, I would say get started by doing what I did. Buy a property with an FHA loan. You could buy two to four units, one to four units using the FHA loan. All you need is three and a half percent down and you can rent out the other rooms or rent out the other units. So that's a good way to house hack and get started. How do you make money from Airbnbs? It's by utilizing a strategy called Airbnb arbitrage. So this requires no down payments, no closing costs. You rent the property, get permission from the owner to then launch it as a short term rental. And the difference from what you pay and what you make is essentially your profit. And how can someone get started with that? So there's really three things you want to do. You want to first look at the regulation in that city to make sure you can get a permit. Number two, look up the 
numbers on air DNA to determine if it could, has a potential to be profitable. And three, get permission in writing from the owner. Real estate versus stocks. Real estate. I love real estate because it could make all or some of your other incomes tax-free because of something called cost segregation. So if you make half a million dollars in profit from your YouTube ad revenue, sponsorships, affiliates, and you own a couple rental properties, that cost segregation, which means you accelerate the depreciation, can make this half a million tax-free, and you can't do that with stocks. How many income streams do you have? Three. So I have the coaching business, my Airbnb portfolio, and these developments that are syndication, which means we bring in partners who bring the capital. How much money do you make? Last year, we made a multiple seven figures on the Airbnbs and multiple seven figures on the coaching business. Are your parents proud of you? Yes. Do they know what you even do? My mom knows I'm involved in real estate and coaching, but she probably doesn't know like the details of it. Uh, she doesn't speak English. Did you go to college? I did go to college for three semesters. I went to OCC and also, I forgot the other one. <laughs> and then I dropped out after three semesters and started my first business when I was 20. Why'd you drop out? I really just wanted to build my own thing. You know, I always struggled in school. I was always labeled like kind of dumb because I always wanted to do my own thing. I would, you know, did school. I was just not like a, a person that could memorize stuff and I just felt like it wasn't going to help me get to my goals. I always wanted to be an entrepreneur but didn't know it was an option until I started like going to community college and being exposed to other opportunities. Would you do it again if you could? I would do it all over again. Next time I just wouldn't go to high school at all. I oh. just start a business from day one. I think college is good if you want to become a dentist, a lawyer, or a doctor. But if you want to become a business owner, the fast track is learn for like if I want to start a YouTube channel, I might as well pay you to teach me how to do it rather than you know what what school going to teach me so at least for entrepreneurship is it important to have a niche in real estate i think it's a good idea to have a niche at the beginning because you want to be able to create a zone of genius something that you truly master and then i do think it's important to start expanding so that you have multiple exit strategies after that but definitely stick to one thing for your first couple deals mm -hmm. tell me your craziest airbnb renter story about six months ago there was a family that put like way too much toilet paper and baby wipes down the toilet and fishy started coming down and it, it just went everywhere like the bedrooms the living room it was a mess what cities do you recommend people getting airbnbs in if you're in southern california one of the cities i really like right now is long beach california because you can apply for a permit pretty easy whether you're doing arbitrage purchasing or management if you're in like the texas area austin and dallas are really strong i would just stick to the downtown areas and if you're like in florida i would stick around disney world uh, or the miami area but you want to be in those high population areas where there's a lot of tourism and a lot of opportunity should people um do that with apartments or houses if you're on a budget start with apartments or studio and if you're on a cushion then go with single family homes i would recommend properties whether it's apartments or houses make sure they have a pool a jacuzzi a game room a gym if possible the more amenities the more opportunities how much does it typically uh, cost to furnish an airbnb so if you're starting with a one bedroom or a studio probably about 6k okay. And then call it 2K for the first month, 2K for the deposit. If it's a single family home, you're probably looking at 10 to 15 grand between furniture, appliances. Uh, where do you suggest people buy stuff from? I like to order everything on Amazon because it just gets delivered, just makes everything easier. And obviously the pricing is very competitive. What are some tax strategies that you implement? So first of all, you know, when you're an entrepreneur, just by being a business owner, even if you don't have an LLC, there's a lot of deductions that you could take advantage of. Like if you have a vehicle that weighs 6,000 pounds or more, you could write off 80% of the purchase price in year one, your cell phone, even if you you have a home office, even meals. How much have you saved doing cost segs? In 2021 taxes alone, I saved about 300,000 in taxes. That's just cost segs, not like all the other deductions. Yeah. How do you guys typically finance your properties? So when you're getting started, most people use their own money. But one of the strategies that we teach our students is to leverage credit cards. So like a cash advance where they could transfer money from a credit card into a checking account. And typically it's 0% interest for up to 21 months. And they'll often use that to pay the first month, the deposit, the furniture, and then take the profits from the Airbnb to then pay off the credit card. We also teach them how to get private money where they pay someone say 10% on their money and that's like 100 times more than the 0.1 the bank pays. So those are like the two most common ways. What's the biggest real estate deal you've done? I would say the six unit deal that we're doing right now, it should have about 1.2 in profit by the time it's done. Teams are really important for real estate. Who do you need to have on your team? You could definitely start by yourself and then when you start feeling frustrated and you start realizing that not all activities have the same value, then you want to start delegating, get, your, get yourself a VA on up work.com or on any, any one of those VA websites. And then eventually, if you truly want to scale, I think it's important that you bring in someone that compliments you. So like I'm a visionary, so I would bring in an integrator that I either hire or as a business partner, because if you look at some of the biggest companies like Apple, right, they have Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak. So they always have a visionary and an integrator. So I think that's really important. Where's the real estate market heading uh, this year? So according to Bruce Norris, he believes that all the levers are pointing towards a correction. Who knows how much? He said, all we need is a reason for people to not be 
able to pay those mortgages and he believes that unemployment is that lever. So he believes that if they keep raising interest rates, these companies will have slimmer margins. They'll be firing people and then people will not be able to pay the mortgages and that'll create some type of crash, but who knows how big. Can you time the real estate market? You cannot. You don't want to wait to buy real estate. You want to buy real estate and wait. What's the hardest part about real estate? It's just taking action. I think most of us don't take action, not because of a lack of skills or tactics, just because we get in our own way of taking action. So nine out of 10 times, it's always a mindset issue. Any final advice for aspiring real estate investors? I would say two things. Do what you can with what you have, where you are, and focus on progress, not perfection. Thank you so much. So what's your name, age, and what do you do? My name is Rob Abasolo. I'm 33. I'm a real estate investor slash YouTuber slash podcast host and everything in between. How many properties do you have? I have about 35 properties at the moment. How does one do that? You start small and you scale accordingly. And when you're less scared to buy another property, you buy the property and you just keep doing that until you're less scared. And then all of a sudden you get really brave and you just keep making offers. How do you finance your properties? A couple ways. Half the time I'm putting my own money into it and I'm doing a, just a loan, putting 20% down. But actually the way I scaled up my portfolio portfolio mainly was other people's money, OPM. So I would basically work with an investor who would fund the property, who would actually finance the property. And then we would do all the work, all the management, all everything that all the operations that go along with short term rentals. And then we just send them their check every single month. Do you have any advice for beginner investors who are looking to get their first property? Punch a hole in the wall. To push myself to ever actually get started on that project, let's say I was working on a wall, I would get a hammer and I would just hit a hole in the wall to force me to actually finish it. And so by doing that, it kind of forced me to just go all in and figure it out as I went. And so that's exactly how it is with real estate too. There are so many people that do all the research, they listen to all the podcasts, they watch all the raw built YouTube videos, they read all the books, all the articles, and never actually do anything because they've researched so much that they've paralyzed themselves right. with analysis, right? So a lot of the times, the best thing you can do if you wanna get started out in the world of real estate is just to punch a hole in the wall. As a real estate investor, how many income streams do you have? Eight to 10 different income streams. How much did you make last year? Six million dollars. What do you do with that money? I save a lot of it for taxes. Okay. So my tax bill is probably gonna be in the neighborhood of a million bucks next year. But at this point, I'm trying to dump as much money as I can back into real estate. So do you have a team that helps you source properties or are you doing that all yourself? After having found my own deals for five years, you know, I took a small, I wouldn't say a break, but I started just making content about how to do it. And I've taught hundreds of thousands of people how to do it. So nowadays, the deals come to me. It's really wow. great. People send me their deals. They send me Airbnb deals, unique deals, sub two deals, create finance deals, wholesale deals. So literally, I never have to even go look for a deal ever again in my life. Yeah. And it's because I put myself out there and gave awesome information out for free, just like we're doing right now. What makes a property a good deal? So for me, when I'm analyzing any short-term rental property, I'm looking for what's called a cash on cash return. So 20% cash on cash return specifically. And that basically shows you, it's the kind of the gold standard metric in Airbnb specifically, because it shows you pretty much the power of your money and how hard it's working for you over the course of a year. So if I put in $100,000 into an investment and I get a 20% cash on cash return, that year I'll make $20,000 in profit. Short-term rentals versus long-term rentals. They both have their pros and cons. Long-term rentals are gonna be a lot more stable. It's good, but I think the returns are super, super low in comparison. On the flip side of it, there's a lot more maintenance that go into short-term rentals, but the returns nine times out of 10 are much higher. So the more work you do, the more money you're gonna make. And that kind of goes to show the difference. So do you want to invest in a long-term asset that's a lot more passive or a short-term asset that's a lot more work, but a lot more money? Where's the real estate market headed? There's more saturation, especially in the Airbnb side of things, but there's also a lot less competition. There's so many people that are so scared to invest right now that it's leaving so many deals out for the people that are really serious, the seasoned vets that actually wanna do this and keep scaling up. It's gonna be a little tough for a lot of people that are just casually getting into real estate, but for the serious veterans, I think it's gonna be the best deals that we've ever seen really in the last like 10 years since 2008. How do you constantly stay up to date on real estate information? I listen to the Bigger Pockets podcast. Just kidding, I'm the co-host of the Bigger Pockets ah. podcast, which is the number one real estate podcast in the world. That's how I used to, honestly, before I was the co-host, I learned everything I knew about real estate from listening to that podcast. Wow. And now I'm the co-host of it, which Congrats. is just like a crazy uh, full circle dream of mine. If you had $50,000 right now, how would you use that to grow your real estate empire? I would probably use it to get 
into a house that I could house hack. So house hack is my favorite way to break into real estate. It's effectively where you buy a home and you subsidize the mortgage by renting out other portions of your house. So you live in one room, but if you have three other spare rooms, you rent each of them out for four to 800 bucks. You have other people pay your mortgage, or you can use that as a down payment on a, an investment and go buy an Airbnb. Any final advice for aspiring real estate investors? Either do it or don't. Stop thinking about it. Thank you so much. So what's your name, age, and what do you do? Brian Pineda, 33 years old, serial entrepreneur. How many properties do you have? We have over 550 rental units. How do you get to that point? Well, you know, you start off buying them for yourself and, you know, I bought single families, then I started getting into multifamily, then I started a fund and now we're able to buy big apartments. Can you take us back to your first investment property? Technically, it's not an investment, but like I bought my first primary home okay. when I was 22 years old oh, wow. and I sold it two years later, made a little bit of money. Then I just kept buying primary homes and like that was all I had. I actually got into flipping houses in 2015 and so that was how I started investing. I didn't really like look for rentals or anything until I had really grown as a house flipper. A lot of people are probably wanting to flip homes. Do you have any advice for them? You just can't be scared. You know, most people are so scared that they might lose money or where are they going to get the money or any of that stuff. But the reality is if you have a really good deal, finding money is easy. Real estate is like a team sport. What positions do you need to have on your team? Well, if you're flipping houses, you're going to have to have somebody who finds deals. You're going to have to have somebody who's putting up the money. You're going to have to find somebody who's going to fix up the home. Then you got to get a listing agent to go list it and sell it. I know you're very big on like taking risks. How do you get that confidence? Well, I think you just look at the downside. Like if you're not happy with where your life is today, are you really taking a risk? Like to me, you're taking a risk if you do nothing. So I would rather take a risk and fail and know I tried and then see what happens next. Like, what did I learn from that? How do I do better next time? Can you take us through a time where you took a big risk and it paid off? My very first house I flipped, I had saved up $10,000, which wasn't nearly enough. And so I maxed out my credit cards for $50,000. And not just my, my credit cards, but my wife's too. That was like the big risk I took. And then I kept taking bigger and bigger risk as time went on. And it's like now, you know, we got $20 million plus of high interest loans out. Like we just keep taking more and more risk. Not every risk ends up in something that succeeds, right? Can you tell us about a time where you took a risk, but it didn't actually work out? Many. The last six months of 2022 were really hard in real estate, right? Rates doubled, properties just weren't selling. And so I had 50 flips going on during this time and a bunch of them went down in value. They went down by like 10%. Plus I had high interest loans on them. So like every day they're not selling, it's costing me more money. So I probably lost over a million dollars on like bad deal. You can't only be happy when things are just going up all the time. Like that's just part of running a business. There's going to be ups and downs. Would you be willing to share how much money you made last year? I mean, revenue wise, it was over $20 million across all the businesses. If I had to guess what I took home is probably six mil plus. Now, I know you used to be a professional baseball player. What'd you learn from that that helps you with entrepreneurship today? You know, I think in baseball, the big thing is you're always failing, right? The best players fail seven out of 10 times. And so I got used to constantly constantly failing like and just having terrible games and having to go play the next day having people in the stands thousands of people judging you and everything else and like if you suck everyone sees it and so when I became an entrepreneur I was like well I'm gonna suck I'm gonna fail I'm not gonna make money on some things and I'm gonna do good on other days and as long as I do good more often than I don't I'm gonna be all right now you said you talked about getting an investor how do you find investors how do you network how do you meet people I mean bro there's a thousand people here right now like so going, who've got money and who are investors going to events like this right easily easily is it important to have a niche in real estate? Yeah, I think you got to specialize in one thing when you first start. I mean, like today, you know, I flip wholesale, I've got Airbnbs, we do multifamily, like we do a lot of things today. But when I first started, all I did was flip houses. That was it. I didn't worry about all this other stuff. And I wanted to become an expert at that one thing. And eventually I went through the make stage, I made 250. I went to the uh, manage stage, I made over a million bucks. Then I went to the multiply stage and then started doing other things. I know you're big on building teams and you seem to be very good at like building a massive company with like good company culture. How do you do that? Well, I think it starts from the top down, right? Like your culture is going to be a reflection of you. So I always tell entrepreneurs, like if you have employees that you're scared are going to backstab you or like you're constantly just having a toxic environment, it's you. You're the reason why it's toxic and why pe you hire people who are like you. It all starts with understanding yourself and creating core values. And so for me, you know, I don't care how much money someone can make me if they don't fit my core values because I know they're going to be toxic to everyone else. And so it's very important 
that you protect your culture. Did you go to college? I did, right out here. I went to Cal State Northridge and I got an economics degree. Would you go back and attend college again? Well, I went to college to play pro baseball, so <laughs> I went there because I wanted to play baseball and I had to go that route. But if I wasn't playing baseball, no, I would not go to college. How would you learn stuff? Instead? In the next 10 years, college and the normal school system are not going to be anything close to what they've been. Like People are going to choose the route of self-learning and going to things like what we got at Wealthy World. Like I'm homeschooling my kids now. There's just really no point for the old school system with all the available resources we have today. And like so many parents are now remote workers or have their own businesses that homeschooling is going to be a much easier option. Do you have advice for aspiring entrepreneurs? My main thing is I teach a principle called make, manage, multiply. And it really is this simple, right? Most entrepreneurs, when they're starting out, they want to do all these different things. They're like, I want five streams of income. I'm going to try Turo, Airbnb, flipping. It's like, nah, dude, start out figuring out one thing. Do one thing that makes you 250 grand. That's like the first thing we teach. Once you do one skill that makes 250, you go to the next stage, which is manage. And so in manage, you got to learn to build a team around your skill. So how do I build out SOPs and org chart? How do I hire people and manage them and everything else? That's what happens in the manage stage. And once you can build that to a seven figure business, you then get into the multiply stage because you have a business that's making money. You're not involved in every little thing of it. And now you can start multiplying money by buying more real estate, doubling down on your business, starting a new business vertical. That's the time to do all those things. So most entrepreneurs, they start like they're in stage three. They're like, I got to get a rental. I got to have three streams of income. They're just, I got to delegate and hire people. It's like, no, you don't have any skills yet. You're not ready for all that. All right, guys. So we just got so much personalized advice that would normally be super hard to get, but that's why I love the internet. That's why I love YouTube. You and I can learn directly from mentors that have already built their empires from the comfort of your home, which is just crazy. This was a super fun, but also super tiring video to make. But yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys got some value from it that you guys can implement in your own lives. And yeah, make sure to hit that like button and also subscribe for more content just like this. I make a ton of videos about personal finance, entrepreneurship, and investing. Thanks again so much, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.